everybody, welcome to the channel. This video is about five tips for better airplane printing. Please like and subscribe, it really helps the channel out. And we do subscriber giveaways. We just gave away our first ever subscriber giveaway, a $25 gift certificate. Speaking of gift certificates, we now have gift certificates in the web store for purchase. So printing thin wall structures is a little bit more difficult than your average 3D printed parts. And if you just got a new printer or you're trying to set up an old printer to print these type of parts, here are five easy tips. So tip number one, you want to have a really nice solid surface to put your printer on. Not a roller table, not a card table, something really solid that doesn't move at all. Rock steady. And you want to make sure that your printer doesn't wiggle. And in this case, you need to add a little bit of a shim under one of the corners. And now it does not want to move at all. This will give it the, a very stable platform to work from so that when any wiggling or jiggling happens with the printer, it's all because of the printer, not because the table is moving around. So as the parts get taller, any wiggling in the printer can cause defects in the surfaces and make the parts look really bad. So having a really stable printer helps with that. It's also a good idea not to have any drafty elements, no open windows around. You want a constant temperature in this area where you're printing. Tip number two is a properly working printer. Now this means that the X, Y, and Z axes are moving the way they should. They're set up properly, that the adjustments for all of the carriages are set correctly so it's not too loose and not too tight. The belts are tight and everything is working as it should. You want to manually level the print bed. Even if you have auto leveling, it gives it more room for adjustments for such things as a warped print bed. You want to manually level the print bed with everything at the working temperature, nozzle and the print bed. So tip number three is to completely purge out the print nozzle between material changes. And that's even with color changes. I love printing with different materials and printing these lightweight, thin structures for RC airplanes. You end up with the foaming material or the pre-foamed material or some other, you know, PETG and any excess material get, that gets stuck in the print nozzle can affect how the next material might print. And if you're trying to do layer on layer print adhesion with just one pass, any impurities could affect that layer adhesion. Prints. You need to get it all out before you start your next print. In direct drive print heads, they're relatively easy to purge completely I use this, it's a steel rod that is 1 8 diameter or 1.4 millimeters. After heating up the print nozzle and purging any excess material out of the print head, I can use this rod to push down through the print nozzle and push out any excess material that remains in the print nozzle. There will always be a little bit left over, but this makes it so that you're not using the new material to try to push it out. The Bowden 2 printer, such as this Ender 3, a little bit harder to do a full purge, yet I still try to do it between every material change. After heating up the print head and removing the material, you have to unattach the Bowden tube 
So with the Ender 3, they supplied a purging needle that you can push up from the bottom to push out any material that might be stuck in the heat break. And then once you get everything purged out, you can reassemble and get ready to print with your new material. And this keeps out any impurities or any random material that might get stuck in the nozzle from affecting the next print. All right, so tip number four is your print bed adhesion and the surface. So there's all kinds of really neat things that you can spray on or wipe on. Uh, there's this uh, artillery has this uh, glass print bed that has a this beaded surface that's supposed to stick to parts really well, which sometimes are great, but you know, it's, it's so it's, this bed is like, it either sticks really well or it doesn't stick at all. So you either get a part that is stuck to it and you can't get it off or you end up with spaghetti on it. I, I choose to always print on blue tape and you're like, ah, blue tape. That's so 10 years ago. Well, Blue tape works really well for printing these thin wall structures because it always seems to stick. You, know, you only get one chance at that first layer and then everything has to build on that. And with the blue tape, it seems to always stick. And then once the print is done with a little bit of heat and alcohol, it always releases. You don't ever have to worry about a part being so stuck to the surface, the print bed surface, that you have to break the part to get it off. All right, and then tip number five is get to know your slicer. So if you haven't printed with a 3D printer before, you need to start with printing some simple test prints. There's usually a test print that comes with your printer or make your own using like the 3D print cube or the little boat thing called the Benchy and make your own test print. Print with some PLA first. It's the easiest material to print with and get to know the slicer that you're gonna use to slice your parts and transfer them to your printer, which means that your slicer needs to be set up to run with the printer you're gonna use. Then when you know that the slicer and the printer are working well with each other, you can set it up for printing airplane parts. And the slicer needs to have the settings that are going to work with the airplane model that you're trying to print. Not all airplane models are designed the same way, so they're not all going to print the same way. For the Sorecraft models, there are all the print settings for a Cura slicer are in the appendix of the instructions. Now that the Perusa slicer can print the Sorecraft models, there's a set of files in the file set that has the configuration file for printing the Sorecraft models with the Perusa slicer. There's also a test part for the Sorecraft parts. It's a little small part that has features that are thin wall and you can get your slicer set up with the right settings such that this part looks nice and most everything else when you print will turn out nice. The other things you want to get to know in the slicer or how to make adjustments such that you can fix defects that are happening with your 3D printed parts so that you can get what you want. Like this part right here, it has too much retraction and there's some voids in the surface. And that's because it was printed with a direct drive printer. So I reduced the amount of retraction and now this part printed perfectly. So hopefully these tips have helped you understand some of the things you need to do for printing these thin wall structures to be able to make a flyable airplane with a 3D printer. The thing you need to have though is realistic expectations of what you're going to get. 
and not every part needs to be perfect. It needs to be good enough to work for what you need to do. It needs to be able to be built into a plane. It's nice to have some tools to be able to work out some of the defects that uh, will occur in the parts. As you print and print more and more parts, your parts will get better and better. Well, happy printing and hope this helps. We'll have more videos coming soon. So please like and subscribe and keep watching.